Well, you know, it was kind of a fluke because I actually started off as a teacher um, and then I decided teaching wasn't for me, so I went to graduate school and within the first semester decided that academia wasn't for me. Um, and around that same time, I was working uh, an office job where I sat by myself in a cubicle all day, but I listened to public radio all day. And that was when I became a public radio listener myself. Um, and at, one day, it just kind of hit me I got, hit me on the head. I said, why don't I just be a public radio person? So fortunately, I was able to uh, take some journal journalism classes in college and ended up in public radio. A former host, um, I, I, I knew one of the, uh, I knew a former host uh, during, when I was a student at Michigan State and I contacted her and got an internship and the rest is history. I, when I'm out in the field, what I'm thinking about is I, the stories that I'm telling, I want to take care, I want to take care of a story like it's a child and I want to, I want to tell it in a way that best represents the subject. Um, I want to make sure that it's their voice that's coming through because in the end it's their stories. I'm just, you know, relaying them to the public. I actually interviewed the man who owns the runs the funeral home in my hometown, and that's probably my favorite story that I've done. It was really short and simple, um, but I really thought that it sort of reflected the heart of a small town, which involves you know not only the the citizens who are currently there, but the citizens who have who have passed through and gone on. And I just thought it was an interesting you know profile of what an important role he plays in our town. when they named a new pope the smoke went up you know they show the the video of the smoke going up and i was instantly pushed out onto the streets of chicago thrown in a cab and i had to drive across town to a catholic school before you know this classroom in a catholic school before they announced who the pope was going to be so i could get that reaction and then i had to get back to the studio as quickly as i could to file a story for the afternoon news so i mean I, that's kind of typical though we do that a lot <laughs> Um, StoryCorps is probably my favorite. Uh, I think StoryCorps was what inspired me, um, honestly, to start doing this kind of work because I, it is simple, it is stripped down, and it is just simply people telling their stories. Um, and a lot of these people, it's not that they've done something, you know, super remarkable. It's not like they saved, uh, you know, a, a family from a burning building or they served in a war. You know, some of them have, but a lot of them are just regular people with small commonplace stories that actually are rather profound you know when they sit there and they tell them um, and I just I, I love the way that StoryCorps brings that brings that out in people um, and then of course I think like every person of a certain age you know I was obsessed with this American life <laughs> before I started working here and I continue to be obsessed with it just because it's such it's such great storytelling it's such fascinating journalism and that really that actually that show actually really changed my perspective of what um, what journalism could be